Hello everyone and welcome back to Schneid's 15. Today we're changing a rear diff and a Ford Edge. Apparently this 2014 has a really weird gear ratio or something and I had to buy a diff through the dealer. It wasn't cheap. Car's in good shape. We really like it. Uh, new cars are expensive so we're going to put one in. I uh, diagnosed it already. The part should be here today and we started into the job. I thought I would just go over what I've done already. Basically, if you don't have a lift, get jacked up so it's easier to work on. And we got to pull our hub and stuff. So your hub is just four 15 millimeter bolts from the back. Obviously, you take off your brake rotor, which the only special tool you're going to need there is a T40 Torx that goes into the little hold on rotor hold on thing. And in this case, you only have to pull off one side because your diff will move sideways. So you can pull off the other CV shaft. In this case, I pull off this one because it's an Ontario vehicle. It's rusty, it's crappy out right now, as you can see. I try and get all my work done in the summer, but this seemed to, uh, you know, bite the bullet when it was cold and rainy and snowy and all in between. So anyways, I knew that this hub had been replaced by the previous owner by a shop. So I was hoping that they lubed it up. And by the looks of it, they put something in there to make it not be stuck because they're usually stuck i undid the bolts and they came out pull off you need a uh, 32 mil i believe it was or a 33 mil for your axle nut and pull that off that's as far as i've gotten and as far as i'm concerned that's as much as i need to do you need to pull out a right here is a 5 16th or an 8 millimeter whatever critic is out there that knows the engineering of these vehicles will tell you if it's an 8 millimeter or 5 16th to be honest you put on there whatever you want and pull that wheel speed sensor up because if it's in all the way like that it won't clear the other end of the cv shaft not that you have to pull it out all the way you just have to get to the side so technically this should scoop by it but so if it's seized try that in my case the wheel speed sensor was not seized and i was able to pull it up so we're going to pull out this cv shaft and get it out of the diff here just need to pop it there we're going to get underneath and start on doing stuff there. All right, well, the shipper just came and delivered me this. So said it was really heavy, so I got it in. But anyways, that's the part number. It's some weird number that only fits the 2014 year. So I couldn't get the $1,200 one. I had to spend more than double that to get the one for this. But it's gonna make this old car go a lot longer, like I said. But anyways, we're gonna jump underneath the car now. And get right up here. I'm going to get my lights in here for you. You're going to need four, or you're going to need to remove four bolts on your differential. I'm not going to mark the yoke because we're putting in a new diff and it don't matter to line it up. Uh, yeah, they're 13 millimeter bolts. And we'll pull those out, drop our diff to the side or our drive shaft to the side. And then we're going to start removing the diff. So once you've taken off your drive shaft, Go up here, you got four bolts. They're T50 Torx. I took them out instead of these because I could not get onto these and they were seized in. So I'm hoping to drop this down and not have to remove these brackets. I'll just attach them to the new diff. And like I said, they were T50. I got to pick in there and clean them out good so I could get it in. Because you don't want to strip those or else this could be a real bear of a job. And by the way, remember that code on yours. You're going to need it and you're going to need to reprogram your computer to, so it knows what clutch pack it has and how to strategy it or something like that i don't know the technical of it but you're going to need that number right there or this number right here sorry 2338 in my case yours will be different everyone is um anyways we're going to drop our sway bar lengths right here because i just replaced them and it's going to give me a lot of space so i took those out they're 15 mil studs actually work pretty good with an impact now I'm going to release this 15 mil here, get our sway bar out of here. And then we got two more up there that I believe are 15 mils. Pull those out and we'll get our mount down. And hopefully we can get this thing to the side enough that we can slide our CV joint out without pulling that side off. Okay. Well, I ended those bolts. You got your drain tube right there. And no, I didn't show myself doing this. It's way too hard to film here, not on a lift, guys. But I just pushed it that way above the exhaust. CV shaft popped out. 
and then I uh, ma maneuvered it over top of the sway bar because I couldn't get that sway bar link out. And uh, we're on the ground. So I'm gonna yank it out of here. It's good because this one axle seal was actually leaking a little bit. And we're gonna get the new, uh, new one unboxed here and see what it looks like. All right, we're unboxed. And after you spend all that money, Ford is nice enough to ship it with the wrong coupler on it. Because this would fit the new models, guaranteed, but not the older ones. So anyways, pulled it off there. Plopped on there. So, I'm going to get to manhandling this thing in. And swapping these brackets first. Okay, so I got the sway bar end links in. And in... The CV shaft I got popped in from this side, I had to give it a whack with a rubber mallet from the end. This side's not quite all the way in, so I might pull off the wheel, loosen the axle nut, and then give it a whack, and it'll pop in. It's just those C-clips that can't get over, and I don't want to hit the boot. So, I got it most of the way in, but it just won't pop. Uh, so, we're pretty well done under there until the drive shaft. I have to lift the front wheel off the ground, so I'm going to do that after, because I... I get my brother, he's here, and he rotates the wheel for me so I can get out the axle nuts easier, or the drive shaft nuts. Now, I've greased this up. I actually use this old school 2 1st seam marine with Teflon from Quicksilver. I'm a boat mechanic, so that's just what I had around, and that stuff's awesome. So I put that all around where the wheel bearing is going to go in. I know it looks bad there, but you'll thank me when you go to pull it out because it'll actually come off. So we're going to put the... Put the hub back on there, slide it on, get those bolts torqued up, get the brake caliper on and rotor, and put the wheel on. If you're doing this job, I'm sure you're competent enough to do that, so I'm not going to film it to keep this video short. And next up, we'll throw the bolts in the drive shaft, get that CV shaft put all the way in. I'll do that off camera because you don't need to see me just battle with that. And then we'll get to programming the rear diff. I'll show you how to do it, hopefully. Okay, I just got the vehicle warming up. I got the diff plugged in, all the vent lines on it, everything. Wheels torqued back on, and it's raining out, and yeah. Anyways, I got the CV shaft there all the way in. What I ended up doing, guys, was I took off my wheel here, since it wouldn't pop all the way in over the C-clip, and I loosened the axle nut, and then took a rubber mallet on the end and gave it a couple wax, and the CV shaft popped right in the diff. Don't freak out right away. And I'll tell you what else, I was super surprised that Ford actually shipped it with oil in it. But see these seals? Look at, they can move. The factory ones are like that too. I was cheesed that there was a seal gone when I got it. Anyways, uh, so now we have to program this. So if you have an older mod model, which I'm pretty sure they retro all of them to aluminum covers, but the older pre-2012s I think had a steel diff cover. Uh, so you need to know this code right here if you got an aluminum diff cover. The other ones are somewhere else. You have to look it up in the service manual. But if you have an aluminum diff cover, that's what you're going to be replacing it with. This is the code that's in my computer now, 2338. My new one is like 688B. I already programmed it, and it really screwed me around a lot, guys. So I'm just going to show you what to do right from the starting I couldn't get it to read when there was when the vehicle was off and the ignition was on. I had to start the vehicle to get it to read properly. I don't know if my voltage was too low or what. My voltage was reading a little bit low because I've had it on and off in neutral, whatever. So anyways, you're going to connect with 4scan here. And it'll run its thing. Hit OK. It's going to run all of its stuff here. 2013 or 14, mine in this case is a 2014. It's going to establish everything here. And I couldn't get this to pop up. It's still reading as you can see here. It'll go through its checks. I couldn't get it to pop up here. I was having a real tough time to get it to pop up. So that's why I troubleshooted it off camera. But it's going to go through all that stuff here, and you can actually do some pretty cool stuff with Ford Scan here. So it's still going through. The 
there was no errors before, now there is, of course. I can see, anyways, there's my VIN shield it. Um, would you like to save the profile? I'll set no for now. Okay, so now what you gotta do is go to this one here, configuration and programming. PCM and you gotta hit module configuration and then you hit the well I'm gonna call it the play button here and it's gonna load here and then you bring up your all-wheel drive active torque coupling so mine as you can see I've already changed it it's 633b um, but if you're doing this you're gonna go edit select it you're gonna type in your value hit ok and then you're gonna hit which you know what I can do it again I'll show you guys. There's my value, so that's good. And then it's gonna, you hit right. Yours will say the old code and the new code and you hit okay. So mine, obviously, I can't do it again because the code's there, but that's how you do it. And then you're gonna just cycle your ignition. It's gonna tell you to shut off the engine and then turn it back on. So, and then you're, uh, you're good to go. So uh, anyways, that's how you change the diff in a, Ford Edge, and that's how you program it with Forescan. I actually have the free, free uh, trial. It's like a three-month trial for free, and you can do a lot of cool stuff on this app. I really like it, or program, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for watching. That's how to change a Ford Edge rear diff. If you're mechanical enough to do this job and take it on yourself, that's why I was a little bit vague on certain subjects on, you know, pulling your wheel bearing and stuff. I'm going to let you battle with all that stuff. It's all simple removal of bolts, pulling stuff off. The biggest thing it, you're going to need, mine was a 32 mil on the back. If it has aftermarket CV shafts, sometimes the axle nuts are different sizes. Could be a 33. Uh, I think that's about as big as they go when I've changed them. They've come with different ones from Napa or whatever. Anyways, that's how I did it. Pulled the one side yanked out the diff put it back in i did pull the sway bar mounts and lower it down that was going to be your biggest pain if you're going to do this job put a bit of oil on them if you're in a climate like me as you can see it's a harsh climate there's sand everything gets thrown all over these cars and it's it's a disaster so and rust is a big one anyways i was lucky enough that my hub came off nice so once you get that diff bolted in uh and on mine ford did give me an extra bolt and stuff because of my model it has the steel coupler instead of that well I guess the new one was steel it just wasn't rusty so I had to swap that out put it on Ford tells you to rotate it until your hole in there you'll see a hole that's drilled in for balance you rotate that to the bottom and then pull it off and then you put your new one on with the balance things to the bottom as well and I marked my drive shaft where it went with a black line put it on and we're gonna go test drive the vehicle now, but as you can see, I reprogrammed that coupler and it was really easy. I could not get it to do it without the vehicle running. So I don't know if that's a trick or not. I read unlimited stuff on forums where guys were having issues that they couldn't program it or it wouldn't pop up. I was having the same issue. Then I started it, I was getting cold out here. I started it up the vehicle to get warmed up and then it popped up right away. Everything programmed fine, it would keep going to 33% and then failing, 33% failing. Start up the vehicle, everything worked fine. Enter in the new values and you're good to go. Thanks for watching guys and please give the channel a like and a subscribe. With inflation, with everything, you know, as high as it is right now in the world here in 2023, almost 2024, this car, you know, we put more than half into what this diff is than what we paid for. We got a good deal on the vehicle. It's in good condition, it's loaded. My wife loves driving it. New cars are super expensive. Do your own work, save yourself some money and you know, a little bit of you know, headaches. What are you gonna do on a Saturday anyways? Some, if you're not that busy of a guy and you got weekends off, you know, I'm usually up to no good if I'm not busy. So keep busy, get stuff done, put your mind to it and you can do a lot of stuff guys if you need some encouragement on a job like this, but I'm sure you're competent enough doing a job like this. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please give the channel a like and a subscribe. We're gonna do more Ford Edge stuff. Hopefully not too much because I'm hoping that this car is nice and reliable now. <laughs> Have a good day.